Hi there! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Wait a minute. This isn't my usual backdrop. <gasps> I'm being replaced, aren't I? Wait. Big Me's coming. No! No! We had a deal! Hi there! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you probably have noticed, Mini-Me has been removed as the spokesperson for my channel. Me and the council- you need to leave. Have decided that I want to do my new intros because I got a brand new studio. So to christen my brand new studio, me and my friends over on Discord decided to do a candy-themed collab. This time I'm partnering with Insanely Creations, Sierra Lucia, Everything Eden, Shelby KG Dolls, Stitchwick Creations, and Dolly Anna. For my partner, I got Everything Eden. Thank you so much for the box. Let's open it up and see what I got. So again, I want to start with saying thank you so much, Eden, for this box. It was absolutely delightful to open it. And I do want to apologize for the shakiness of the camera. My setup wasn't the best at this point because I was actually just working out of my room. And here's a letter from her, which was really cute and actually explained what the weird jars that I got out of the box were. They were actually um, the dry ingredients for some cookies. She also sent this tool, this rainbow fabric, some cabochons and other knickknacks, some yarn, um, some chocolate chips, which threw me off at first, and then these weird fluffy packages. And this is actually how she packaged her mason jars, which was actually a great way to package it because none of them broke. They all came through um, perfectly. Um, it was really hard to actually open them, which is why I'm definitely struggling on screen right now. But I really love the little bow she added, the fabric. I'm so excited to make these cookies. Um, I'm probably going to make them sometime later today. Or tomorrow. Or this weekend. Thank you so much, Eden. I'm so excited to make these cookies and everything and all of the doll supplies. Sorry if anything's missing. I technically unboxed it before I filmed this. Um, I'm so excited to make the doll who has already been made. She's sitting over there, but I am so excited to show you the process of how she came to be. So to make this custom, I decided to use a Gen 2 Cleo head with a Katrine Demieux body. So first, we're gonna cut off all of her hair. Now, once she has a lovely buzz cut, we're gonna clean up our workspace because cleanliness is the best thing to do. And then we're going to take a flathead screwdriver and scrape the inside of her scalp. This makes picking out all of the extra hair uh, so much easier. Now, once she's all nice and clean, we're actually going to take her outside and we're actually gonna spray paint her white because I want this doll to be a jawbreaker. Now, once she is spray painted white, I decided to sketch an eye off um, camera onto a piece of paper. I ended up not using that shape, but I kind of liked the look of it. And um, once she was spray painted, I did spray her down with Mr. Super Clear, but it had been raining all weekend. So my Su Mr. Super Clear did not want to work with me. So after I roughed in kind of a sketch of what I wanted, I quickly moved over to acrylic paint. As you can see, I'm using black here, which is a big no-no on a white face, but it's only coming out light gray because, of course, the sealant wasn't working. Um, now I'm going to rough in an eyebrow shape. This footage is kind of chopped together because I kept wiping off her face, putting it back on, wiping it off again because I just couldn't get the pencils to build the way I wanted to. And uh, this is when I decided that she needed to look like a jawbreaker. So I mixed up some red, yellow, and blue with water and splattered it all over her face. And this is when she started looking like a murder victim. Thankfully with the other colors she ended up looking more like a jawbreaker and less like um, Freddy Krueger's Revenge. Um, so yeah, I really like how the speckling kind of turned out. It was very fun to just kind of let the paint do what it wanted and kind of just splatter her face. Um, both of my parents said she looked like Jackson Pollock. So once that is nice and dried down, I'm going to paint on her lips. Um, I am using mostly black for her face up because I thought that she already had enough color going on, so a black makeup look would look the best. Um, her eyebrows aren't exactly symmetrical, 
but I think they turned out as best as I was going to get them with just paint. And this is the crustiest paintbrush I own. I actually threw it away right there um, and replaced it with this one. Um, getting her eye liner straight was a little tricky, but with a steady hand, it actually worked out pretty well. Um, the one nice thing is since I am painting an eye, I was able to actually use the white paint on the inside of the eye to thin out the eyeliner because I made it a little too thick right here. And since she is so colorful, I decided that she was just going to have black eyes with uh, no iris um, definition, so she's just one flat color. Um, I thought it looked best in the end since she her face was already so busy. And here I am painting in the sclera just so I can thin out her eyeliner line. Also, I am so sorry if you can hear a cat meowing. My cat decided she wanted attention right now. Okay, and then once you get the eye whites all set where you want, I am going back over the eyeliner with some black just so it's a little thicker. And I am adding in a nice little wing. Once that's all done, I'm going to refill in her iris. Now it may look like I'm doing a lot of very fast erratic strokes, but this is actually sped up like five times. So I'm actually really slow and careful. So if you're ever using acrylic paint on a doll, always be really slow or you risk messing her up really quickly. And now I'm painting on some teeny tiny eyelashes that you can barely even see. But in the end, I thicken them up so they look a little bit better. Now that that's done, I'm going to copy it over onto the other side. And this is how her hair, her face turned out. Next, we have to add on some hair. Um, for her hair, you're going to take some flocking, glue of your choice, and paint the glue all over her head. I decided a buzz cut would make her look the most like a jawbreaker. Um, if I didn't say that already, I decided she's going to be a Jawbreaker doll, because I thought that'd be the most fun. Once she looks like a shriveled old granny, you let her dry out on the side, and she'll be good in like three to four hours. Now, for the dress, I decided that she should have a fluffy roundish dress with a bunch of different petticoats, because I did get a rainbow of fabric, so I thought it would be best to have like a rainbow to kind of do the layers of the Jawbreaker. So here we are. Um, once you get all of your strips connected, um, you run it through a machine. I think this might be the first time I've shown my sewing machine on camera. Um, but when I put a really long running stitch on it, um, and this running stitch actually lets you shorten down and gather down the fabric strip because this doll is only 12 inches tall and this fabric strip is about 30 inches. No. It's like 90 inches. I shrink it down to 30 inches. So this is one of the strips I've already done, which is already at 30 inches. See how nice and roughly it is versus this yellow strip is just very long and smooth. So you're going to take one end and tie a knot around it. And then once you're done tying your knot, you're going to go to the other end, grab one of the threads and just lightly pull on it. I must stress, be very gentle. If you pull too hard, you will snap the thread and you'll have to start all over which I totally didn't have to do like five times for this dress. Now, once you get it gathered down to the length that you want it, um, I measured it against the green. It turns out that I didn't gather it down enough. So I actually have to break the knot that I made, tighten it some more, and then retie the final knot. But once you get it down to the correct length that you want it to be, you're actually going to take it over to the iron, iron it down, so that way it's as flat as possible for the next step, which is attaching it to some tool.
Okay. Once it's all nice and ironed out, you're gonna take your length of tool. Um, I did measure it to make sure that it was 30 inches, but you can also just line it up with the fabric and cut it. Since I'm making multiple of this skirt, I did measure everything, but you can always wing it. It's such a big scale and such a tiny doll that an inch isn't gonna matter too much. Now to make sure that the tool was straight, I actually folded it in half and then cut along that fold. Um, it gives the best straight edge, but it's not really necessary. It's kind of an extra step. Now go ahead and pin on your ruffle, and then you're gonna feed it through the sewing machine twice actually. So the first time here is the ruffle is facing upwards. And then once you're done with this, you fold the ruffle facing downwards and top stitch it down. That way there's two lines of stitching holding the ruffle in place and also it just it holds it and makes it look nice Now, if you want, let me know in the comments if you like watching the sewing portions of videos or if you prefer more of the face up and less of the sewing portion cuz Trying something new, wanna see if you guys like it. Now that we have it done, this is kind of what I'm going for, this big roughly skirt, and I ended up making every single color in the rainbow. Now I am putting it in rainbow order, because who would I be if I didn't make it rainbow? And then I did pin along a portion of it to make sure that all the layers were as even as possible. And this is kind of what the underskirt will end up looking like. So colorful. And now let's work on the skirt. Now, I did this earlier, but I didn't quite explain it. If you're working with a cotton fabric or a fabric that does not have any stretch, you can actually rip it along the grain line. So what you do is you just measure how long you want, cut a little uh, piece, and then pull it apart. It sounds horrendous, but it works really well. So this is actually going to be for her overskirt. I am including this nice cute little white lace that I was given by Eden. And this is how the skirt kind of turned out. Now I am going to make it a little shorter because it's, as you can see, pretty much the length of the whole doll. So I'm going to put it on the doll, measure it out. It turns out to be like four and a half inches, um, which was almost the perfect length. And then I'm doing the same thing where I'm going to cut a little bit of it and just pull it apart. Do not try this with stretch fabrics. You will just ruin them. It has to be something with no stretch. Now I did gather the skirt together and add this little waistband. This waistband is just like a two inch piece of fabric. And then I stitched in all of the petticoats. And I'm gonna cinch it in one more time and attach the top. So this top is actually from a pattern by Gigi Requiem. Um, I'll link them down below. And now that I have it nice and colorful and pristine, I'm going to cover it in paint splatter to match the rest of her face. And in essence, also add it to her body because I haven't splatter painted her yet. So to do this, I'm using the same technique as on her face, just some watered down acrylic paint in red, blue, and yellow. Um, all of my paints that I do use are either artist sloth or folk art paint. Um, they tend to work well on fabric as well as plastic, um, but always be careful if you're putting acrylic paint on plastic as it will chip off eventually. Now, I had a pair of shoes that I thought would be perfect for this custom, which were a pair of like ice cream shoes, but they turned out to not look great at all. So I ended up finding these other shoes, which I think are from Rochelle Goyle, or they might actually be Caddy Noir shoes as well. Um, but I am gonna take the same red, blue, and yellow, and I'm going to repaint the shoes just to make them fit the color palette. Um, I did make them inverse, so one shoe has a blue heel and one shoe has a red heel. Um, anytime you are painting shoes, just make sure to coat them in some kind of sealant at the end. I usually use um, satin varnish um, to make sure that they don't chip, because the plastic's kind of shiny, and if you don't seal it in, it will chip off eventually. And now that her shoes are almost done, let's go ahead and take a look at how she turned out.
And here she is. I think she turned out so cute. The paint spotter turned out almost exactly how I wanted it to. Um, and her face is so cute, despite the fact that I could not use a single ounce of Mr. Super Clear on it to fix it. Um, so I'm actually really happy with how the acrylic turned out. And I think for a name, I'm gonna go with Maxilla. That's actually the name of this upper part of your jaw. So we can call her Max for short. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.